Hi everybody. Tonight I'd like to do a video for people in the group that are on a tight, tight budget. Maybe some of you have lost your jobs due to COVID and you're really struggling to get by and you've only got so much money to put towards food and you got a hungry family and not only a hungry family but a picky family. So I'm going to try to help you um, get through that with a budget meal that you can make taste like a uh, you know, $35 meal uh, at a restaurant. So yesterday uh, I was at the store and they had pork tenderloin and they were buy one get one and I think uh, the most expensive one was $6.25 so I got two of them for $6.25 and I froze one and I've got one that's uh, sitting there in the fridge. So I'm thinking what can I do with this? Now there's a lot of things you can do with pork, it's very versatile. You can cut it open and you can stuff it like I did with the uh, one of the videos with the apples, the cinnamon apples. Uh, you can fill them with the cream spinach. You can uh, just roast it in a uh, with the Lipton onion soup mix, things like that. And one of the things I'm going to make tonight for you is a uh, pork. My version of pork medallions in a. Uh, mustard cream sauce and I've also got a head of broccoli which I got on sale it wasn't that expensive and uh, I'm going to show I'm going to roast that and I've got a packet of instant potatoes and yeah real potatoes don't really cost all that much either but um, if I'm just cooking for myself, I'm not going to worry about slicing potatoes and stuff. That's something I'll make a big pot of creamy mashed potatoes if I have guests. But uh, anyway, um, all of this tonight is going to be very tasty and it's going to be uh, on a very friendly budget. It should satisfy anyone in your family, uh, your picky kids. It should satisfy your hungry husband that's looking for something that is uh, kind of warm and filling. And it's going to help you out with the diet because I'm going to take some of the fat and like I'm going to get rid of the heavy cream and I'm going to use maybe some half and half instead. But uh, I think this is going to be something good. And I'm going to only use that portion that you would use for dinner and then any leftover portions uh, we'll do in a follow-up video. Maybe I'll do a pork tenderloin sandwich. Maybe we'll do little hors d'oeuvres with it. Um, I, haven't, I haven't decided yet but we're going to make this pork go as long as we possibly can, the two tenderloins. So um, you'll be porked out by the, <laughs> by the end of the week. So anyway, um, Let's get started tonight with the um, pork tenderloin medallions with a, a mustard cream sauce, roasted broccoli, and we'll just say whipped potato. So something we can do tonight. Let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is prep the broccoli for tonight. Uh, this is organic broccoli. I bought it fresh. I think I got it, the all this broccoli here for around $4.50. Uh, I always look for stuff on sale. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to cut these uh, into florets. I'm going to leave some of the stem on because there's actually a lot of uh, good nutrition in those stems. But uh, I'm basically looking for the florets. I like those tender little heads. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to do and it sure beats frozen. Here I finished up the broccoli and we got a nice little pile and it's looking beautiful. And I'm just going to take all of this right here and I'm going to place it into a bowl and I'm going to let it sit out until it's time for dinner. And uh, right now let's uh, start working on the pork. Well we're ready for the pork tenderloin. So uh, yep $6.79 and it was buy one get one free. So I got two of these beauties and I'm only going to use one tonight. Now you have seen me uh, prepare these in the past, uh, but I'm going to go over it again uh, really quick uh, because I don't want you to be intimidated by this. It's actually pretty simple to do and uh, 
it's going to make the world a difference in the tenderness of your meat. So let me get it out of the package. And what you're going to see here is a thin of a little, little bit of fat, but you also got this silver um, muscle right here. It, and it's going to be pretty tough. So what you want to do is just trim some of the fat. And I want to get the knife just, just below the surface of that thin uh, membrane. And I'm going to kind of lift the edge of the knife up and slide it towards the front. And I'm just going to take that piece right off. And there might be just another little piece here that I will get underneath. And again, kind of lift the sharp end of the knife up towards the ceiling a little bit and just run it along and you can take that off. And then you look, examine it, see if there's any other fat um, that you can just kind of get off of there. And that actually looks pretty good. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a squared off end. I'm going to take this section right off here. And I'm going to reserve it off to the side. Now normally you'd use like uh, most chefs, they'll go with three fingers all the way across and they'll make like tenderloins and then slice them. But for this dish, I'm just going to do individual little medallions. And I'm trying to figure out how to cut this here so that you all can see it. Um, so let me kind of readjust the pork a little bit. And uh, yeah, let me try it this way. I don't want to lose a lose a hand. <laughs> it's kind of uncoordinated that way, but you can see that it's it's really kind of thin. It's not too bad. It's about the thickness of my finger. So if you kind of like lay your finger there, it's 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 just about that thickness. Not too bad. It should cook pretty quick. So we're gonna put the pork like this, just so that you can see the way I'm cutting this. And. Uh, Sometimes if you flash freeze this really quick at the freezer for just a little while, it'll make it a little bit easier to cut. Uh, it'll make it a little firmer and less, uh, you get a lot less motion. But anyway, I'm going to uh, take and cut the rest of these up. And when I'm done, I will come back. Now that I have the um, pork all cut up into medallions or thinner pieces, I'm just going to throw some sea salt down and season it a little bit. And uh, what I've got is a plate here that I'm going to be, uh, I've got gluten-free flour. You can use any kind of flour you want. I wouldn't recommend coconut flour or uh, almond flour for this one. But I just happen to have gluten-free. It was the first one I reached for. And I'm going to use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust each of these pieces into uh, the flour and then I'm going to like beat it a little bit till most of the powder most of it's off and I'm just going to put it on this plate and set it off to the side and when I'm done I'll, I'll put them all in the fridge but basically here I am uh, just kind of spanking the meat a little bit uh, getting some of that powder off uh, the gluten-free flour and I'm going to do this for each and every one of them. And I haven't seasoned the flour. I guess you could, but I'm just happy with the salt that I put on there uh, on the meat. And uh, I'm going to continue to do this until they're all done. And I'm going to put them on a plate and pop them in the fridge until dinner time. So pretty quick prep. Now I'm going to prepare the sauce that I'm going to put on top of the broccoli when it comes time. So I got a tablespoon of low sodium uh, soy sauce that I just put in there. And because I don't have a lot of broccoli, I'm going to go with um, maybe one and a half tablespoons of uh, some really quality olive oil. Now dinner is going to be about an hour and a half away from this time. So I just want to kind of soak everything together in this bowl. Uh, you don't have to refrigerate it. You can leave it right on the counter. So we've got the soy sauce, olive oil. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of agave uh, ketchup. You can use sugar-free ketchup if you want. And uh, I'm also going to add, depending on how hot you like it, I'm going to add a uh, tablespoon of uh, Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Now you can put more if you want. You can add red pepper flake if you really want it hot. Um, but 
this is what's good for me right at this point. Now a substitute you can use for the ketchup and Frank's Red Hot is uh, chili paste and you get that in the Asian food aisle uh, but I didn't have any on hand so I'm doing the, the ketchup and the Frank's Red Hot. To that I've got uh, three cloves, three uh, uh, minced uh, fresh uh, cloves of garlic and I've also got a tablespoon of fresh squeezed uh, lemon juice. So let me just add a little bit of salt, about a quarter teaspoon. And I'm going to also add about a quarter teaspoon of um, pepper, if I can find it. So, uh, like I said, dinner's an hour and a half away, and I just want to kind of get all this stuff incorporated so it kind of melds together. So we're going to whisk this up. And we're going to whisk it again prior to putting it and tossing it on uh, broccoli. But uh, it's a beautiful thing. And I think it's going to be really add a, a different depth of flavor to that roasted uh, broccoli. So we'll see. So that concludes the prep for dinner tonight. So we've got the tenderloin or the, uh, the pork tenderloin sliced up in a little medallion. So we've got them lightly coated with flour, uh, of gluten-free um, flour and dusted off and that's sitting in the fridge. We've got our broccoli, the florets all chopped up, we've got those put aside, the fresh broccoli. And we've got the dipping sauce uh, or the sauce that I'm gonna put on top of the broccoli before we roast it um, all off to the side. That's just going to kind of come together and, and, and uh, become one beautiful thing over the next, say, hour and a half. So um, we've really got nothing left to, uh, to prep. Okay, it's time to start preparing dinner. So what I have done is started the oven at 400 degrees. I'm letting that preheat. And once the oven is preheated, we're going to mix up the broccoli and we're going to get that in the oven and it's going to take about 20 minutes for that to uh, get done. So once I got that in the oven, then we can start on uh, the meat and then we're going to do some mushrooms. And then once all that's taken back out and setting aside, we'll do the cream sauce and then hopefully it'll all come together and I'll boil a little bit of water for the instant potato. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's uh, once this oven gets preheated, I'm going to start on the broccoli, which in video time is right now. Okay, we're ready to prep the broccoli. I've got a large bowl here. I'm going to put my cut broccoli right in there. Sorry about the water in the background. I'm going to be getting my hands dirty in a minute. So let's Mix up this beautiful sauce that's just kind of been sitting here, hanging out. And I'm going to put that right on top of the broccoli. Toss it around a little bit. <laughs> It's got a real, um, reminds me of walking into the uh, Chinese restaurants. It's got that, that soy sauce and all that's got some uh, pretty good flavors in it. So let me just pick this up and it's going to be a little bit off camera, but I'm going to place it into a bowl that I can bake with. I'm going to just dump some of this good garlic and stuff right on top. So that's what we're looking at, folks. Got our heat fired up here. We get that pan nice and hot. And to that, I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil, garlic infused olive oil spray. And I'm also going to drop down about a tablespoon of butter. I have got the meat out of the uh, fridge, that beautiful uh, tenderloin. 
So once we get this butter up to melting, we're going to layer that uh, without crowding it too much. We might have to do it in two batches. We're going to put the pork down in there and then we are going to um, set it aside in a bowl to just hang out. We'll warm it up again with the sauce. We have got the meat nicely cooked, um, cooked just about through, and uh, now we've still got the hot pan. I'm going to add just a little bit more butter to that. Heat's at about medium high. And we're going to throw in those beautiful mushrooms. I give them a little spray with some garlic olive oil. just gonna add a little bit of salt to help suck some of that moisture out and we're gonna let these cook for a while these are getting a little bit toasty which is good I'm gonna throw in some Worcestershire and what the hell because it's in the broccoli I'm gonna throw in a little bit of soy sauce Just let that cook. So these are looking delicious. I just gave them a little taste and they are wonderful. And I'm just going to transfer those right into a plate or a little bowl. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to set them aside with the chicken. So to the saucepan I added a little bit more than a half cup of dry white wine and I'm going to bring that to a boil. To that I'm going to add about a quarter cup of normally I would say shallots but I don't have any so sometimes we've got to improvise and I'm going to throw some onion in there about a quarter cup and I'm just going to let that sit there with the wine. And I'd say we'd let that sit for about, I don't know, about four minutes without letting the liquid fully disappear. This is reduced down quite a bit, so I'm going to add a cup and a half of um, half and half. And I've got the heat down to medium high and I'm just going to let that sit oh, until it reduces down to about one cup so I want about a half a cup going out of there all right it's reduced down quite a bit it's at medium high I've been stirring it off and on as we go through to make sure it doesn't burn Now to this, I'm going to add about a half a, or about a teaspoon of rosemary. Now what I would like to do is, you can use fresh um, basil, that would be awesome, with some fresh dill. But I don't have any of those on hand, so I'm going with the dry stuff that I have available to me. 
I'm going to kind of mix that in there. And I think that the uh, rosemary is going to give it a, a nice little flavor. And I'm also going to go with just a little bit of nutmeg. A little goes a long way. And now I'm going to put in the mustard. I'm going to use my Sir Kensington's spicy brown mustard. And I'm going to go with about two tablespoons of this. I'm just going to kind of eye it out. Now, if you want to go even without the, the half and half even, you can use a low fat or no fat sour cream and that would work in this as well. And we're just going to let that heat back up a little bit more. I'm going to throw in a little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to put in some sea salt just a little bit because I have to taste this now to see where we're at. And that's always a good thing you should be doing is tasting as you're moving along because you can adjust the flavors however you want. You want it a little sweeter, put some monk fruit in it. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to add some tarragon to this. I haven't even tasted it yet, but I can tell that it would be really good with this. So just a little bit of tarragon. As you can see, I'm just doing, oh, I love the smell of that. Just put a little sprinkle in. And it's really thickening up at this point. And you really wanted a sauce thickness. If you're uh, not familiar with the sauce thickness, you can uh, take a spoon and just kind of coat the back and then when you run your finger down as long as it stays like a defined line that is sauce ready so so I'm going to give this a little taste You know, I think it's going to benefit from just a little more mustard. Not a bunch, just a little bit. And then to this, I'm going to put in those beautiful mushrooms that I have cooked and put aside. Just going to get those in there. So, going to kind of mix this up. Now you can serve this two different ways. You can put the pork down on the plate and cover it with sauce or you can put the pork right in here with the sauce to rewarm it. And what I'm doing is um, I have weighed out five ounces of the pork and I am just going to put my five ounces in and I'm just uh, not to cook it but just to warm it up a little bit and I'll take it out with the tongs. The broccoli is done. It is out of the oven. So all I've got left is the potatoes and we are ready to go. Well, I hope you're ready to plate because I certainly am. And I'm sorry about the audio. The equipment's been malfunctioning all night. But uh, anyway, I've got this uh, wonderful, uh, tasty, tender uh, pork tenderloin medallions that I'm going to place down on my little appetizer plate. 
And like I said, this was five ounces. And it, I, I wasn't able to videotape myself tasting this, but it's off the chain. This is so good. It's some of the most tender pork that I've had in a long, long time. Of course, I haven't made this dish in a long time. But uh, I'm going to add some of that uh, delicious, savory um, uh, mustard cream sauce with that sweet onion and those portobello mushrooms. And you can just see the steam coming off of that. I mean, the, the aroma of this plate alone is going to get people running into the kitchen. Now, I didn't have time to do the, the little flowery decoration potatoes. Uh, like I said, it's uh, tonight has not been a good night for me. But um, you're going to get it just like uh, you'd serve it at the house. Just kind of toss it on the plate there with a the spoon, and that's going to be good enough. Now, the broccoli came out really good um, and it's a little dark in color but the flavor is there and I'm still not sure about the Asian flavor with the savory of the mustard but it, it was delicious and I threw a little bit of chive on the uh, top and some uh, garnish on the potato and all together this is a great dish for really cheap and it came together pretty quick so there you have the um, pork tenderloin uh, medallions with a mustard cream sauce with portobello mushrooms, sweet onion, uh, whipped potato, and uh, roasted um, seasoned uh, broccoli. And it's just a winner all around.